showing up. <laughs> Can give people like a couple minutes to roll in, I think. And Ashley's uh, going to be recording this call. So if anyone didn't make it, we can post it. Um, yeah. Oh, good. Recording has started. So yeah, I'm just going to roll right in so that we have lots of time. Actually, uh, today I'm going to be presenting uh, to explain our give backs changes. And then I'm going to be slinging it over to Mitch, who's going to talk about how we're changing our verification process. And then I'm going to be slinging it to Griff, who's going to be talking about like wild and crazy updates that are happening in the Giveth galaxy and in, in GM. So um, yeah, the purpose of this call is really just to like make sure that everybody's up to date with like all the changes that we're making and answer any questions and get everybody uh, super aligned. So um, yeah, praise Almond for helping me to create this call and set it up and and create the presentation and Nico for pinging everyone in advance. Um, yeah, I'm excited to dive in. So I think we can start. I'm going to start. Um, so yeah, great. Welcome to Give Token Essentials Part 3. Um, we have an agenda here. Um, we're going to be talking about, as I mentioned, give backs changes. Uh, including the minimum donation amount, the lottery thing. We're going to be talking about decentralized project verification using Devout and uh, Galaxy announcements. So starting with givebacks, big changes. Um, so you've probably heard a little bit already about givebacks v2. It was a conversation that started, um, well, a while ago. It was an idea that Griff had a, a while ago and basically arising out of the need to scale givebacks and also out of the need to effectively make givebacks more valuable for people, attract more people to donate on Giveth and to get excited about Giveth and givebacks and donating. So um, basically givebacks v2, it's like, you know, former givebacks donating $5 and getting a few dollars of give tokens uh, back. And then uh, with givebacks v2, you can donate $5 and win up to $5,000 $5, of give. So imagine your donation as a ticket to a raffle. Every five don five dollar donation to a um, give backs eligible project <laughs> on Giveth now gives you a chance to win big. So basically, um, the way this works is we're starting it out as an experiment. So this this started actually the with the give backs round seventy one, which began on. September 4th on Tuesday. So we're right in the middle of the first experimental round. And we're going to be doing this as an experiment for round 71, 72, and 73. So basically from, well, September 3rd or maybe 4th. I think it was 4th, but September 3rd until October 15th. Um, we're going to have half of the total givebacks pool go out as prizes and half the total givebacks pool will go proportionally to each donor. So if you were already familiar with givebacks uh, before, you know, you donate to a project, you would get some proportional amount of give tokens back. Now you're getting some proportional amount back in give tokens. And also you're kind of entering for a chance to win. The amount of dollars donated determines the size of the prize pool. So similar to all givebacks round previously, we have uh, 1 million give tokens allocated to go out to donors as prizes every two weeks. So that's still the same. It is up to 1 million give tokens available. Um, but the actual amount that goes out as prizes and proportional donations um, depends on the amount that is donated in the givebacks round. So I put here that the givebacks prize pool is roughly 75% of the USD donated up to 1 million give. But it's actually like, that's not... I mean, it's roughly that um, because the actual amount depends on the give backs percentage on the projects as well as like the dollars donated. So some projects yield 50 percent back, some projects yield 80 percent back. Um, so I added this example in here. Um, Mitch asked me for an example. So an example of the pool size. If 7,500 USD is donated in the round, the give backs pool will be approximately 75 percent of that in give. So if you assume a give token price of point. 0.06, yeah, 0 0.06, 0 0.06, then um, 7,500 divided by 0 0.006 times 75% is 937 
thousand give effectively. And then we're splitting that in two. Half is going to donors proportionally and half is going out to the five winners. So there's like a bunch of math here, but I just kind of want to illustrate it, illustrate here that um, if there's not a lot of donations that happen within a give backs round, then the give backs pool size won't be as big. And the max size, the max pool size is determined by more people donating. So we're working on ways of commuting that communicating this to people so that like people can kind of understand that it's like you kind of actually want to donate more. There's like an optimal amount that you can donate to maximize your ability to win and also maximize the pool size. Um, yeah. And the way that we're selecting the winners for give backs too, is that we're actually selecting donations, not donors. So the, we're going to be basically looking at the entire list of donations and the size of donations and the give power amount of the projects, and then selecting from that list five random donations that win. Basically, an address could only win one time. So you can't like if multiple donations um, were from the same address, then then that one wouldn't be selected. But um, we're going to be able to see like what is the size of the donation and what project did they donate to in order to determine the winner. So everyone knows the size of the winning donations and the project that was supported. Yeah, so the prizes that that we're we're setting up here uh, for uh, Givebacks V2 Part One experiment um, is basically up to half the the Givebacks pool. So if you win the first place, you could get up to um, two hundred and fifty thousand Give. Second is you know twenty five percent of that. Third is fifteen percent. Fourth is five percent, and fifth is five percent as well. So. So basically, it's like, you know, the total, the sum of all of the the give that's going out to these top five winners is 500,000 give or half of that total 1 million amount um, that could could go to, uh, yeah, to donors. So give power matters. So dollars donated and the give backs percentage of the project you donate to determines the number of raffle entries effectively. So, I mean, I'm struggling, like, I'm trying to figure out a way to communicate this best to the audience. But, you know, there was there was some concerns around um, around like give power, not like contributing anymore. But actually give power still determines which projects yield the most incentives for potential future donors. If a project is boosted to the top then um, they'll have a higher give backs percentage. And then basically if someone donated $1 to that project versus a lower boosted project, their odds of winning would be higher because I mean, in the back end, what we're using is like give backs USD value, but it's basically a combination of the size of the donation and the give power rank of that project or the give backs percentage of the project. Yeah, the the easiest way I always say it is for every give that you would have that you would get from normally donating, you also get w one ticket in the raffle. Everything's yeah. the same. Exactly. Thanks, Griff. Um, yeah. So basically, the boosted projects offer more incentives for donors. So you want to, you know, if you're if you're like, I want to maximize my winnings or even if I want to like maximize the possibility of winning by donating to a particular project, you can use your give power to boost that project and then donate to that project. And then you're kind of like increasing your chances of winning the give backs V2 raffle. Yeah. So that's kind of give backs V2. I mean, I sort of went like really uh, into the how of this and and less of the why but um because i really just wanted everybody to kind of understand like the nitty-gritty of how this works and then um to, to leave some space for questions but basically a big point of why we're doing this or a big like kind of exciting thing or an exciting opportunity that we have here is to actually just sort of like rally people with more excitement around donating on giveth and with the possibility of winning you know instead of just like okay like i can get just like a little bit of gift tokens back every time you actually could get a bunch of gift tokens um i think griff was saying at the beginning of the call that that zepti was just sharing that you know if you donate at least five dollars you could win like up to two hundred fifty thousand gift tokens um and so we're, we're kind of like using this in combination with qf and other things that we're offering at giveth to just like really really rally more donors um our, our mission at Giveth is to reward and empower those who give to projects, to society, and to the world. So by introducing this system, we're hoping to rally more donations to projects, therefore empowering people who are giving to the world. And then even in a greater way, reward people who are donating. Um, 
it's also a lot more meaningful to like, you know, you get 250,000 give tokens, then you can stake and lock that and give power and actually become an influencer on the way that we make decisions at Giveth. Um, because, you know, give power is your, is your decentralized governance power in the Giveth DAO. There's a couple of other things that are changing here with givebacks kind of at the same time. I just wanted to put these in here to make sure everybody knows. Um, we're introducing a claim window. So starting on September 12th, which is this Wednesday, any givebacks allocated to addresses who never claimed their give and whose last allocation was more than nine months ago may have their gives sent back to the Giveth DAO. Basically, what happened is we were just we, we've been sending out give tokens to addresses that, that haven't been engaging and might not even necessarily been active if they were like multi sigs, but they're not act active on that chain. And so, you know, in order to kind of like bring that give back into the DAO so that we can use it for future givebacks or future endeavors, um, we are imp implementing this claim window. Um, yeah. And we're also implementing a five dollar minimum donation requirement for givebacks. This is a really big one too. Um, starting September 17th, so at the start of the next givebacks round, donations need to be at least $5 to qualify for any givebacks. In, in the raffle, uh, you have to donate at least $5 to be part of the raffle anyway. That's like, you know, this round as well. But like, if you donate it less, you're still gonna get a little bit of those proportional givebacks. Um, but starting on September 17th, that's gonna change. So you'll need to donate at least $5 to a particular project uh, to qualify for givebacks at all. Yeah. So what can you do? You can donate at least $5 to any givebacks eligible project to enter into the raffle and to just kind of experiment and play with these, these rewards and get to get a feel for what the system looks like. And also um, here is a link to the Giveth events calendar. I'll actually share the whole slides into the chat here. So you could like click any of the links. Um, there's a link to the Giveth events calendar here, calendar here, which includes all of our Twitter spaces related to givebacks and givebacks v2, as well as QF rounds and all kinds of crazy things. So make sure that you add the Giveth events calendar so you can kind of keep an eye on all of these updates. Um, yeah, so that's givebacks changes. Um, I, I want to leave time for questions, but I, I'm like, should we do questions on this part now and then do devouch and questions, or should we just do all the questions at the end? Questions now. Questions. Questions now. Okay. If you have any questions about the raffle or comments or feedback, now is your space. I was curious, why did you choose to choose donations over donors um, when you're selecting the winners? I think I'm. Yeah, well, ahead, one man. thing, I mean, I'll let Griff comment as well, but one thing I think is super cool about that is that we want to basically be saying, like, which projects are also benefiting from this kind of thing. You know, if you're just like this donor, but they donate to a bunch of different projects, it's like not as exciting as like this, this $5 donation to this project, like $5 to refi Medellin made this person this, you know, um, thing. I think it like the using the project and using the donation size allows us to both explain people the impact of give power and also the impact that this system has on projects as well as like get people kind of like rallying around it more. Um, yeah. And Griff, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, that's that's the primary reason. I mean, the, the main idea here is when we're designing products and making um, design decisions that we focus on the marketing side, as especially for something like this. Uh, so that's like a higher level. That's like a higher level product thing that we who we focused on for this for this launch or that I was pushing that we like do it marketing first for the product design. But it also does have a major benefit in that we know exactly what chain to don't to give the givebacks on and just like all the details are kind of the same it's like uh however we you, you know that we we have we have a clear like rule set to play with whereas if we pick a donor there's a lot of question marks that we just have to make decisions around. and the donation with the five dollar donation title uh thing that uh that uh aubrey mentioned is also part of part of the game
there's some other questions here in the chat. I see uh, $5 per donation or a total of $5 per round. It's $5 per donation. So we're just looking at individual donations that are over $5. But, you know, fun fact, it's actually going to be $4 in the back end because, you know, we've got that like percentage to giveth and there's a little bit of fluctuating in the USD value of volatile currencies from when it's donated and when we grab the price. So in order to basically make sure that any you know supposed five dollar donation qualifies the actual size is four dollars in the back um i also see yeah okay cool so that answers jake's and septi's questions and then yeah any other yeah any other um questions <laughs> any other questions here on give back speed too Uh, probably just also worth noting that this is a six week trial. Um, we're going to we're going to go for it. We're going to have this Twitter spaces every Wednesday uh, announcing winners every other Wednesday announcing winners for the next three rounds. And then we'll have a follow up vote to say whether or not this is the way like I see. I know that uh, Jose, for instance, doesn't like this change. The comments on the forum. Uh, you know, right now, this change is like a temporary experiment. And if people like it, we keep it. And if people don't like it, we get rid of it. But again, one of the main impetus for this change is that givebacks, as it's currently uh, structured, doesn't scale. Uh, reviewing donations is like uh, reviewing all these donations is a is a horrendous task uh, that Thank God for Rob and, and William for taking it up. So it's off my shoulders, but it's still like um, something that if we had 10,000 donations, we just it wouldn't work. So some the give backs has to change. This is our first proposal. We'll see if there's another one. If, if this doesn't work, we'll have to come up with something else. Yeah. Totally. I mean, I feel like the scalability is like a major factor as to why we're introducing it. But I'm also super excited about it. Just already seeing people are super excited about raffles and lotteries. Like we're, we're talking with Lotto PGF about building something to make like the lottery selection on chain. And it's like a major thing that they're super excited about. Octant is also right now experimenting with integrating and using a raffle system. And I think that like raffles are something that people in the crypto space are now kind of like breathing more life into and getting super excited about. So it, this is like a really huge opportunity, I think, to actually like rally and drive more donations as well as kind of like build more enthusiasm and excitement for donors. I feel like give backs program as it is. Um, projects get excited about it. Um, like projects are really happy that there's like the incentives, the small incentives for donating to their project, no matter the size. But I feel like, you know, looking at the unclaimed givebacks and just generally kind of like action on Twitter and people talking about it, it's the proportional givebacks don't get people that excited to be bringing in more and more donors. And what we really want to be doing is like building our community of donors, attracting more people to be donating to projects so that we can we can just grow as as giveth and we can. Um, yeah. And then the projects on our platform can grow more and that we can just be like pulling more people in so that we can ultimately just make it so that, you know, so we can work towards GURVs and just like make kind of our visions for the future possible. Um, yeah, just I want to add that, like the the Twitter spaces that we're doing is uh it's really going to be focused on donors and, and Aubrey is going to be hosting them and is like coming up with different ideas of like things that are going to make this fun for building our donor community. We've got a great project community and engagement from project owners in the platform, but less from donors. So this is also an opportunity for us to be like building and nourishing that like other side of our community that like so far has been like kind of left out. I don't know if Aubrey, you wanted to add anything or if anybody else has other questions. I won't take up too much time, but I do want to say that I am excited to uh, try out this experiment and I think it's going to be fun. Um, we had our first space about, that was like an AMA and it had great kind of feedback, I think, from all the listeners that were there. Um, I'll go ahead and drop the link to that space here so you guys have that as well. But I also put the link for the next space on the 18th for you guys to RSVP to. Um, and I do hear the sentiment being reflected from other donors that kind of went to the space that they're kind of excited for this as well. So. And, it, you know, it's six weeks, so things can always change, but I'm really looking forward to trying it out. And thank you guys for giving it a chance. 
I see that there's like still some questions about like the the way that give power and um and the your your possibility to win integrate. Uh, maybe Griff, do you want to give your give your give your voice a chance at explaining that? Uh, the are you talking about uh, Rob's question? Um, I think it was, you know, Zepti was asking, or it's like, if I make three, don't, oh yeah, Rob, if I make three donations, then I get three raffles and you're kind of explaining like the, amount. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, th the idea was to make as few changes as possible from the Olukavex program. So, uh, it's really how many give tokens you would have gotten for the donation is how many raffle tickets you get. Uh, and if you're, you know, if you make a donation to a project that's, that's boosted, you know, like to Giveth or the Give Matching Pool or to the uh, Kids in Palestine project that I'm blanking on the name on. Those are like the top boosted projects. You're going to get a lot more tickets to the raffle than if you made a five dollar donation to one of the projects that's new on the project on the list and, uh, you know, is not very highly boosted. So, uh, yeah. And of course, the more if it, you donate more than five dollars then you also get more tickets so it, you know it's really just we just are i think a better way of saying with the five dollar limit is that we are excluding donations that are less than five dollars and that's like you know but otherwise givebacks the givebacks program is the same and the, that that five dollar limit this round we're applying it to the lottery so that we don't have to change the comms but then that five dollar limit is just the whole give backs program because of a vote last last month. So mm -hmm. Yeah. So like honestly, your chances to win are the same as they were with give tokens before. It's just now every give token is turning into a raffle ticket. And Mitch made a great point here in the chat too that we're also going to be distributing even these rewards as um, as we always do with give back. So part is actually going to be streaming and part is going to be liquid. Um, so they're getting kind of like an allocation of that stream to whatever the prize value is. Um, yeah, and I just kind of want to like just give a super quick demo. It's like if you're like kind of like what I don't understand this like give power give backs percentage thing. If you just go to a project on Giveth and you look here, we have this like get rewarded with up to eighty percent of your donation value. Like that is eighty percent is like the maximum. Like so, donating to this project five dollars or more gives you the maximum um, the maximum raffle entries that the size, an equal size donation would, would get you. So you could also look at, you know, it's like, we're going to need to change some of the copy on the DAP and the way that we explain this for the raffle. And it's something I'm currently like trying to pull my hair out about and trying to figure out how to explain, but you could also look here at the give backs rank, like projects that have a higher rank, um, are more likely to, they're, they're, it's like donating to them the same amount means that that donation size makes it more likely for you to win than if you were to donate to a lower project. Um, you could like, I can go back here to the project page. If I like filter right now by verified to try to like, if you, you could, you could find like projects that are kind of like lower boosted with give power. A lot of the times by looking at projects that are freshly newly verified because their community hasn't had a chance to uh, kind of like rally behind them. So if you kind of filter by verified and then you sort by like newest ones, like here's a project that's verified, there's only a 50% give back here. So if you donated $5, like if you donated $5 to the, or $5 to the first project, you would get, you know, 80% of $5 is your entry size. And this is um, $2 and 50 cents entry size. I don't know if that math is making sense for you, but um, there's another question here. Uh, do we somehow prevent or motivate people to not off ramp give tokens as soon as they get them? Um, yeah, you know, I think I think trying to pull people, I think using the donations and talking about like the impact of prizes and trying to like rally the community of donors are all things that we're trying to do to basically bring people in um, who win those prizes um, and, and direct them to like actually use their gift tokens within the Giveth ecosystem. Um, if you if you stake and lock your gift tokens, you get give power. Give power means that you can boost projects on Giveth and also vote in the snapshot. So like. You know, there's there's been all these like exciting and crazy contentious votes uh, happening right now in the Giveth snapshot and give power is your voting power there. And you need to have give power before the vote goes up in order to have an influence in it. So 
Um, I think that like part of our Twitter spaces and what we're going to be doing uh, in in those conversations is like making sure that we let people know um, what they could do with their gift tokens. But, you know, of course, people can do whatever they want with their gift tokens. If they if they get a big prize and then they wanted to sell the liquid portion, that's OK for them. But there's also the you know, there's you also have to consider that they're getting a streaming portion. So if if their actions of are negatively affecting the price, then overall, like in the long term, they're they're actually getting less um, value for those gift tokens. Um, yeah. Anything else in here? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. 80% of $5 is $4. Yeah. So, OK, I'll just say that thing again. If you donated $5 to like the Giveth project that has the 80% give backs, your proportional entry is like four dollars into the into the raffle versus if you were to donate to this lower boosted project, it would be two dollars and fifty cents is your proportional entry into the raffle. Cool. OK, great. Awesome. Well, thanks for all the great questions and the conversation here yeah. about Give Back V2. Um, ben, ben, am... did, did you hit the give stream question? I did. Oh, OK, my bad. Was it clear? Yep. I yeah. Great. I mentioned GiveStream and I mentioned donor communities. That's how we avoid the dumps. Cool. So, so then the next, I'm going to pass it over here to Mitch, um, who's going to uh, walk through another really important change that we're doing on GiveBack, on GiveUs, decentralizing project verification. I, and I can keep sharing my screen, Mitch, if if you want, or you want, if you want to take it, uh, tell me. Yeah, sure. Um, so you guys can see here, we're going to be decentralizing um, the project verification process. There has been a forum post up for a while. I think a lot of you have read it and commented. I'll drop a link here. But basically, the gist is that um, we started talking about this, um, I think, like very early this year about how to get more people involved in the project verification process. Um, right now, there's just a few people on our team that review projects applying for formerly verification. Um, and then these people have to decide like, okay, is this project considered a public good? If it is a public good, like is the owner legit? And all these other like various questions. And it is very subjective and it's very hard to define like, okay, what is a public good? So. Um, we started thinking about this problem and how we could maybe broaden the people that are like adding their perspective of like whether or not this project should get givebacks. Um, and so um, we had a vote that happened a while ago in another forum post about like, OK, maybe we don't stick to like this this pure definition of public goods and maybe, you know, projects that are very value aligned and legitimate and you know are are working with something that like give it feels good about giving givebacks to could also become eligible for that program so that's where that idea whole started and you can even go to the next slide lauren um so we started um working on a product called devouch which i'm sure you guys all know about um that started as the idea for decentralizing project verification uh, we ended up winning an Optimism grant to build it as a separate product. Um, and that product, I'll even send you the thing here, was finished uh, a couple months ago. We're still making new features and little additions to it here and there, um, mostly focused on supporting Optimism's retro funding program. Now we're getting to a point where we're ready to like come back full back to where we started in this whole conversation and use this devouch thing that we built um, and plug it into Giveth. So um, the idea here is that, yeah, thank you, is that we're going to be creating um, a group, a subgroup of our community called Giveth Verifiers. And these verifiers are going to be able to participate in the project verification process. Um, so if you go, actually, if you go to Devouch right now, you'll be able to see that there's a whole bunch of projects on there. And you'll see some of the top ones are from Giveth. Um, yeah, there. Thanks, Lauren. And so actually, people can go in and, and vouch for these projects. And the verifiers at the beginning will consist of 
Optimism badge holders, um, the top token delegates uh, in the Optimism token house, and also our internal um, verification team. We will be creating a process to allow people to become verifiers who aren't part of those groups that I just mentioned, and that'll be coming out from the community. But the general idea is that these verifiers will go in, they'll vouch for projects that are on Giveth that are looking to, to prove their legitimacy. And then when they reach a certain threshold of vouches, for example, three unique verifiers have vouched for this project on Giveth, um, they're going to get a new status, which is going to be called vouched. Um, and essentially, when they have that vouch status, that means that they can participate in, uh, thank you, Lauren, in give power, meaning that they'll be able to be boosted with give power. The project will show up higher on the list of projects based on how much give power they have. And then from that, we're going to be separating out the what formerly was called verified will be called givebacks eligible. And for this first iteration, we're going to be having a very familiar flow for project owners. So no, no big changes. You're still going to fill out um, a project verification form. It's going to be called a givebacks eligibility form. Again, not a huge stretch. And then when you pass that form by our internal review team, then you'll get a givebacks eligible badge and you'll also be considered vouched because the review team will have vouched for you. So those are the big changes there. And actually, if you go to the next one, it's a bit hard to see because the, the lines are all in black, but I'll, I'll read it out to you guys anyway. So this is, this is the first iteration. There's going to be um, uh, a nice and slick one that's coming after this, but essentially, you know, the project is created. So the first thing, and then in order to get the vouch status, you kind of go through the flow at the bottom. So um, to become a vouch project, the project receives vouches from Giveth verifiers. Those are, will be about 260 addresses um, of people to begin with. And so they receive vouches. We check, have you got the threshold of vouches? I think we're going to start with, with three. So, okay, no, not yet. Okay, so then the project, um, you know, keeps waiting for those vouches. Um, verifiers will be reviewing projects as they get created on Giveth. And as soon as they get that, th that threshold, they're going to become vouched and they'll receive a vouched badge. And then if we go further over, what does that mean? Blue arrow. Oh, thank you. Looks like somebody's bringing in one with a nice white background. But anyway, uh, can be boosted with give power and shows up higher on list based on rank. So those are the things that we, we just mentioned. If you're going the route of um, to become givebacks eligible, we go back up to the top, to the top left. So the project applies for givebacks eligible through the current verification form. Again, it's already been renamed on the app, the givebacks eligibility form. Uh, internal review team checks it out. Is it approved? Yes. Okay. Becomes gives back eligible, receives givebacks eligible badge and a vouch badge. If it's not approved, uh, we deal with the current process. Usually the internal team will reach out to the project, said, hey, you're kind of missing some information here. Can you clarify these things? Or maybe it's just not a good fit and uh, doesn't get that givebacks eligible badge. So, But if you do get the badge, then you get all these benefits. So you get everything related to give power. And then you also get yield givebacks to your donors. So that's going to be the, the first version. And to give you guys an idea here, this is going to be happening. Um, it's already starting to happen. There's small changes coming into the app, changing some of the wording that we're using. Uh, there's links to devouch from the project pages on Giveth now, so people can, can find that and vouch directly on devouch. Um, and then we're probably going to be making the changes with the badges and the way that givebacks is going to be handled um, starting um, probably late this week or early next week. So it's actually going to be happening very, very fast. Um, there's going to be a blog post coming out today that will talk about not only this version, but also the bigger, cooler version that should be happening in a few months from now. So, um, yeah. Next slide, maybe. Let's check that out. If you're not a Giveth Verifier, no problem. Um, 
if you're vouch if you're not part of the group that i just mentioned before you can still vouch on devouch and it'll show up um we'll just put like if you are gitcoin passport holder uh, you'll be able to vouch um as that otherwise if you don't belong to any of those groups that the app recognizes you'll show up as as no affiliation but you'll show up on the list of vouches or flags that have been given to the project um, and we'll also count that as well on, on the homepage. So you'll even have a chance to influence the verifiers by vouching for the project. You know, if you're if you're if you want to engage your community that is, you know, legitimate and get them to vouch for your project, that actually will help you um, move up and earn those vouches and hopefully get you into the different um, categories of, of statuses. So even if you're not part of the group, no problem. Your vouch can still make a difference in the system. Um, and yeah, what does that mean for Giveth? I think that's the next slide there. Yeah, so again, reinforcing some of those points that I mentioned. Decentralizes our project verification by tapping into the wisdom of the broader community. Um, legitimate projects who are not necessarily our definition of public goods get the legitimacy of the badge. So you get a nice, sweet vouched badge and you also get some benefits. Um, we drive adoption and utility for Give, allowing any vouch project to get boosted to the top and potentially even participate in quadratic funding rounds. Usually, we generally had a requirement that QF, the projects needed to be that, that GiveBacks eligible, they needed to be verified, they needed to do a verification form. With this change, we open up, open up the opportunity for projects that aren't verified, that haven't filled out a verification form to maybe participate in quadratic funding rounds and even boost themselves so that they show up higher on the list of projects during those QF rounds. So some cool changes. Um, I can give you guys a short demo of what it's like to you know, use Devouch. Um, I can share my screen here or you can just, I can talk you through it, Lauren, if you want to just do it. I think you can handle it. Okay, sure. I'll fall. Yeah. So you see Lauren's on the Devouch homepage there. She's already logged in. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we'll look at uh, the project page here. Um, you could see the first one here because it's sorted by the most vouches is Hand Protocol. And the second place is Refi Medellin. Who are they vouched by? 14 Gitcoin passport holders and then one person from uh, no affiliation. So maybe we're curious, what does that mean? If we click on the description of it, we can open up the details. We have the description. This is the exact description of their project on Giveth and their banner. We've got some pictures in there. Wow, very detailed project description. I love it. Uh, and then we can see in the table here, all attestations. So you can see which address, what date, who, what group they were part of. If they added a comment, like if you hover over one of those comments, Lauren, we can actually see um, the comments that those people made. And then if it was a vouch, keep away from FOMO <laughs> and hold old the vibe. Okay. Love it. <laughs> Cool. And then if we if we scroll back to the top and maybe we go back to the home page here. Thank you. If we look, there's sorting options here, so we can even sort by different things. Uh, most vouches, least vouches, flags. And then, oh, look at that. Yeah, so that you can see even here we're getting projects from Retro Funding 5. But um, if we go back to the top, Lauren, or maybe you want to you want to flag that one. It doesn't look very legit. <laughs> Looks very sus. So let's flag it. Let's just do a little flag here. This will look yep. some fun. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Lauren, she's part of the Giveth Verifier Tester Group. She can add a comment with her attestation. She's going to flag this NFTs project. Seems sus. I agree. She's going to sign a transaction from her, her web wallet. And we'll see what uh, how slow optimism is today. Ending. Oh boy! So that's going to go through. That's successful. And if she goes to the um, project details page, she can see that those flags are all registered there as well. 
Okay. So it says Karmatic, September 9th. As a give it there fire, she flagged this project and she's able to add her little comment there. So uh, some other stuff you can do from the homepage there is we have lots of filters. So you can see which platform do you want to look for. If you only want to see projects that are from Giveth or from Retro Funding 5 or a combination of, of all of them, you can add those as well. Um, you can even look for if you've gotten at least one attestation from a specific group. So if you want to look for projects that have already been vouched or flagged by Giveth Verifiers, you can filter for that. Yeah, so all sorts of stuff, and you can see the information is very clearly there on the home page uh, for each project. We're constantly getting new projects as they're added on the platform, so it's happening in near real time as people are applying for Retro Funding 5, as new projects are um, applying for uh, creating their projects on Giveth, we're adding those as well. So yeah, um, that's a short demo of, of you know, what's going on in Devouch. Go ahead. And I, and I just want to say there's a major marketing campaign that just launched today from the Devouch Twitter account. So definitely uh, go to X and find Devouch, follow, um, retweet. Uh, there, there's a DAP node tweet came out today. We're going to tweet at every project that launched on uh, Devouch, basically, that, that, that applied for Retro Funding 5, because the goal is that maybe the reviewers in Optimism, maybe they find Devouch useful, and if they do, then they can, uh, then, then they would, uh, you know, be happy to give us a big grant reward in Retro Funding 6, uh, because we created value for their reviews. Right now, for the next two weeks, they're reviewing projects, the batch holders. So if this tool is useful to them in, you know, making their lives easier during that review process, oh, man, that would be huge. So any activity is good activity here. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren, for the, the tweets. Cool. Uh, awesome. So, yeah, that's the demo. Uh, what can you do? Um, go ahead and vouch for projects. Um, use the thing. I can see there's also lots of questions and feedback already coming in. Um, but yeah, vouching for projects, using it if you're a project owner and you want to get your community, or if you're just a curious donor, you can uh, go ahead and just you know look up for projects and vouch for them or flag them. You know, definitely there as well. Um, give some product to the product team. Um, I think there is a thread. I'm trying to think of the best way. Um, not soliciting DMs. That's what I want to figure out. But um, there should be a way if you just have a question. Um, I'll make a little devouch decentralized verification channel and maybe we can drop uh, questions in there. I think that's the best way to go about it. Um, Q&A. So... Um, first thing I see here is how do projects take the flag off? Uh, well, they make a better project. Um, no, I think it's good to address or maybe find a way to improve your project. Uh, if your description, like for example, the one that, uh, Lauren flagged was applying for retro funding had a one word, two word description, I think something like that. So that's like a very obvious thing. Um, right now. Just so you know, flags won't do, won't harm your project. Um, it won't, you know, be less less eligible to get that that vouched badge since we're only looking at um, vouches instead of flags. So there's no projects won't have control over who vouches or who flags for the projects. They won't be able to remove them um, since it is the the community that's all contributing to those, but. That being said, you know, no affiliation voters or, or Gitcoin passport holders won't have any real effect on your project on the Giveth platform. So I wouldn't worry too much about those things since it won't have a real impact for you. Um, there's no limit to the amount of flags or vouches. It's just, you know, however many people. Um, 
but it also will give a signal to perhaps the verification team. If a project has a lot of flags, maybe it'll take a closer look at the project, but in the end it won't, um, won't actually decide anything. Uh, any other questions? I can see John Kins typing something there. Okay. I think Rob had a question. Is there a limit to the number of flags a project yeah. received? I just said that there was no limit. There's no oh, limit. Oh, sorry. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's the first version. Again, as I mentioned, that's going to be happening perhaps by the end of this week. It's already starting to slowly happen. And there's going to be a... This is the first version, what I've just explained to you all here. Yeah. And somebody, Ali, you're going to have to mute my friend. Ooh, someone's about, yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. Just read the forum post. I don't know if we're going to have time for me to get into the, the whole long version thing, but maybe in a couple of months when we get closer to it, um, we could talk about it again. Yay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that, um, great, uh, cool. Yeah, I think that, so basically, you know, there are some big changes that are happening on the Giveth platform around like projects that are getting verified, eligible for give power, eligible for give backs and all this stuff is shifting and changing. So that's like really one of the big goals of having everyone here so that you can all stay abreast of these uh, big changes. Um, the the very next part of our presentation today is a discussion El Jefe, uh, Griff, <laughs> just to talk about all the other exciting updates. I don't know how you want to sling this. I'll pass to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, first off, we're a DAO, so there's no Jefe here. Uh, easy. Uh, hard to fire me, though, because I got a lot of give tokens. But uh, that being said, uh, so much is going on in Giveth, and even more, if you can believe it, is going on in the galaxy. Uh, first, I want to start off with QAC. Uh, QAC is going strong. Ben is the, the El Jefe over there, and he's killing it. Him and Tam uh, are launching an epic, epic app where we're going to launch uh, you know, a bunch of bonding curves for projects and then do QAC rounds where instead of... Uh, where instead of QF where you're donating here, you're actually going to, uh, you know, be receiving tokens in return for sending money in and your money is going into their bonding curve to mint those tokens. Super cool. This is the infrastructure we're using for curves and it's all happening on the giveth platform. So stay up to date, uh, watch the applications end on Friday. If you know of any projects, you know that it's really for projects in the polygon ecosystem. It's not for refi projects so please uh don't don't uh don't like you know refi projects should probably wait for us to launch the curves but please recommend any project that wants to launch a token is hanging out in the polygon ecosystem uh add them add them to the party bring them in and you can check out the um website and learn more at qact.giveit.io Hence, why it's so huge for uh, for the next for for us. Okay, and then uh, next praise on Farcaster. Uh, Pazlar is Pazlar in here? Let's see, yeah, Pazlar. Do you know when pr this is launching? When do you think this is going to launch? So we're we're having one button to be clicked by Ramin. But he is like on vacation, so uh, that he he told me yesterday that he's going to be available today. So as soon as he gets back and then spends two minutes to change the address to base mainnet, that's going to be our lunch. But we are announcing everything tomorrow, and we're having the uh, the party on Friday, the lunch How party. Yeah. What's the lunch party? Is there going to be an invite for that? There's going to be an invite for that, and there's going to be grief in there. Oh, hell yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, then do you know what time that's at? <laughs> I'm not sure. Is it, oh, yeah. is it 5 p.m. CET? But yeah, Liam is going to yeah. send us the invitations. Liam, what time is it? 1 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. 
that. Yep. 7 p.m. CET, 1 p.m. Easter. 1, 1 p.m. in New York, 7 p.m. in Barcelona. So, and this is, this is super cool because basically where Praise is going to go to Farcaster, Praise will not give give tokens out So on Farcaster. Uh, so if you want to just praise and give give tokens, definitely keep it in the Discord. But if you're praising, if you make a praise in Discord, why not copy paste it and send it over to, uh, you know, praise uh, and, and do it in the giveth channel, right? Backslash. Yeah, just like that. You don't have to reply, though. You can actually just make a new cast. I don't know if it'll work in a reply. Um, but if, yeah, you make a new cast at at give praise, you know, and and then uh, you can just say at give praise to. Yes. Yo, for me. Oh, my gosh. Wow. What do I get praised for? For presenting the. Oh, the. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yay. I that as well. And and so right now this is going to pop up uh, and when you cast it, it will actually the praise bot will respond, but the mints will happen on uh, Sepoya, like base bases Sepoya yeah. implementation. So everything's working. It should work. Uh, and then but if you mint the attestation, it, it, it doesn't really count as a uh, real data because it's on the testnet. So uh, tomorrow it will definitely work. And uh, I'm really excited about it. And uh, the other thing is, when you make this praise, definitely click that little bottom uh, drop down in the corner and, f and try to put it in the giveth channel. Because it's fun that we can actually derive uh, some action to the giveth channel, as well as uh, this keeps it in our context so we can track it if we ever want to use it for anything later. Yeah. And if you're praising someone in a different context, you can use it. But we're really focusing for the soft launch this week to keep it in the give it channel. Um, OK, back back to the slides. It's a lot on praise, uh, but I'm very excited. Oh, and the biggest thing on praise, if you dish praise, you will get one dollar in USD glow little partnership forming with you uh, with glow dollar, our, our, our good friends over there. Uh, they're going to throw down 500 bucks, uh, and we're also putting in $500 to bring people into using praise. So you will get $1 if you dish praise. So definitely do it. Uh, other things happening in the galaxy. Did you know that we are launching the wallet for ETH Denver? It's fucking epic. Unicorn.eth is our white label wallet service. Uh, this is this is it. This is major alpha. You can see it's even in Vercel. We're doing a lot of testing right now on it. So uh, this will be the ETH Denver wallet. Don't let this. Don't put this on Twitter or anything. You know we haven't done any announcements. Or, uh, all the all the marketing stuff is still really raw. But I want to make sure while we're all here that everyone's aware that we're doing this really cool thing. So you and we're launching soon. Even though ETH Denver is in February uh, or March. Uh, people will be reserving tickets soon and doing the application process. This will happen on our wallet. So, like, for instance, and the people who, uh, you'll, you, Lauren luckily is a spork whale, so you need to switch to your spork whale address, and then you can actually uh, get through there, and, and you will be able to uh, um, register a ETH Denver dot com domain name so spork whales get it first people who have uh you know there's like 20 people or something that are considered spork whales they have over 250,000 spork uh lauren and i i think are the only ones in the room but uh but then there will be anyone who went to eth denver before uh also and and staked spork so if you got one spork and staked it then you will be in the next group and you will be able to pick an ETH Denver subdomain and which becomes a website. So you can actually be like zeptimus.ethdenver.com. That becomes your wallet address as well as your wallet's website 
where people can deposit money into that website for you. So this is like the cool thing with uh, with this process. And we are, uh, you know, it's an account abstraction wallet. You'll be able to log in with Google and uh, not have to worry about key management or any of that stuff. So really fun. I'm so excited for this. It's it's fucking epic. Uh, Alex Gardner, Russell Craddy, Yusuf uh, and and Scott uh, uh, Ayaz and like so many people have put their heart and soul into this. Gil definitely threw in some some uh, important work all over the place. Monique. Monique was like clutch to make this happen. This is a project we've been working on for nearly a year. So, uh, so happy to see it move on, move forward. Uh, next is uh, Pairwise. So Pairwise is the official tooling for retro PGF 5 and 6. Well, hopefully 6 if we do well on 5. So all the badge holders will be using, will have the option to use Pairwise to vote in this next uh, retro PGF round, retro funding round. Uh, Madi and crew, I don't think the demo link is out yet. Uh, so I don't have a link for anyone on this, but we will. Uh, the retro funding six is where things get really exciting because we're actually going to start playing with liquid delegation. For all the OGs out there, you might remember we had uh, we had uh, liquid. We, we actually used to play a lot with liquid democracy tooling in the Giveth Trace app. And you could delegate and then they could delegate. And it was really amazing tech. We're, we're bringing it back for Pairwise, and we're going to do some really cool uh, governance experiments. Uh, major praise to Craddy for bringing in the ZK knowledge there so that we can actually use zero-knowledge proofs to do liquid uh, delegation and, and hopefully experiment with liquid democracy in Retro Funding 6, round 6, which doesn't have a date yet. So we'll see when that comes out, hopefully this week or next. Okay, OPGovGraph. This is a pretty crazy thing. If if you can click that Notion doc, um, the, the, this is an app that uh, we're partnering with the Trusted Seed on to actually map the OP, um, the badge holders connections to different, um, to different like groups. Like, are they a Trusted Seed member? Uh, are they a member of this DAO or that DAO? And uh, you can scroll down more. Actually, there's. There's just a lot going on over here, and Ali Reza is really a one-man show on the development side, so major praise to Ali Reza for taking this on. Uh, it's going to be really cool, and it's like a first demo for it. Uh, we're pushing it out next week. will be a big release for this, so definitely check it out and uh, see what is going on there. And then we already mentioned it, but Devouch is is happening for Retro Funding 5. And I actually have even a better link because what what I would like to see, we we really need more activity here. Um and yeah, I'm gonna put this link here. Because we need more uh vouches. We need so many more vouchers. So if you have some projects that you know that applied to Retro Funding 5 and you believe that they are super legit, uh, please go vouch for them. Uh, I, I think it would be good to vouch, for instance, for projects GMGM applied for uh, and with, of course. And there's, all, and there's a bunch of other projects that applied. Uh, yeah. And, of course, you know, I didn't put it in here, but... Speaking of GMGM, GM, GM, GM is looking for clients as always. If you know someone who needs help applying to retro funding round six, uh, they're adding value in governance in some way. They're building tooling. They did governance research, any of that stuff. Um, definitely have them talk to uh, uh, Katabe and Pedro over there and we can bring them in and do work. Or if there's a, another small dev team that has a layer two play like they want to be paid money to launch on every layer two. That's another awesome project that we can bring in. Uh, so that's there's so much going on in the galaxy. It's crazy. And just having everyone here to give give the updates, uh, we, we had to take advantage. OK, well, that's the show, Lauren. If you don't have any if you have any closing words, go for it. I know 
Uh, Jose said he could uh, out if he wanted to. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks everybody for coming and, and joining us with this presentation. It was recorded, so we'll be posting it to YouTube. Um, so anybody who missed it can, can follow up later. But yeah, I'm really excited for all of the major updates happening in the galaxy, especially Givebacks V2 and decentralized verification. I see Ashley has a question in the chat. Um, yeah, but, you know, I uh, definitely want, I, you know, we can keep keep answering questions in the chat, but I definitely want to be respectful of everyone's time. A lot of people here. And uh, yeah, but this was this was really great. And I hope that it was a little bit informative. And, and you know, I'm always available for more questions. If you have any questions on any of these things, you can always reach out to me. Um, yeah. I, and just just on Ashley's question, I think it's really quick. Uh, I we don't have the designs for curves uh, solidified. We want to see how things work out in the first QAC round, and then we'll make a lot of these design decisions around curves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for that one, also, we were talking about it, and it's like, well, maybe the lottery, like the givebacks go into the, you know, the lottery winnings go into the curve, and that could be an interesting dynamic. But yeah. I, I, I think they ahead. should for sure, but there's a lot of details to work out. Yeah. <laughs> it's on my list to spec those things out. Um, Jose, do you want to play us out? We'd be happy to hear happy to hear a song. Probando sonido, sonido, sonido. Uno, dos y tres. Hello. You you're now? a little, you're a little quiet. But now I'm good, right? Yeah, you're much louder. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Hey, thank you for the opportunity of music tonight. You are you are invited to a birthday impact celebration concert that we're going to be held in the Token Smart Discord and I want to share this first song in the day No Winter's Land a song for refi, a song for long-term visions, a bilingual song and the song that got me to the Amazon in 2020 thanks to winning a DeFi contest that through this song it turned it into a refi one so keep away from FOMO and hold the vibe <laughs> Radiante desterrando oscuridad, el invierno. 
invierno solo existe para agradecer al sol Cierra el círculo, disfruta de la orquesta, de la vida y el calor Viene el sol radiante desterrando oscuridad El invierno solo existe para agradecer al sol Cierra el círculo, disfruta de la orquesta, de la magia y el amor Cierra el círculo, disfruta de la orquesta, del cacao y el sabor Cierra el círculo y disfruta de la orquesta, de Jopito y la visión Tenemos la semilla corazón, vamos levantando una oración Que la disponga a germinar para el despertar que tenemos la semilla con azul vamos levantando un abrazo que la disponga a germinar sonido para el despertar sonido para el despertar sonido para el despertar sonido para el despertar I think we got some little saturation, but that's great because I'm prepping myself up for tonight's concert. Be there, we are gonna highlight Give Us Projects from Africa, from the States, from Venezuela. Connecting roots to the wireless. Keep away from FOMO and hold the vibe. Thank you! Thanks. Thank you so much, Jose. That was beautiful. Thank you, everybody, for joining. What a great vibe and what a great, what a great call. See you all later.